once I stood at the foot of a great high mountain that I wanted so much to climb. And on top of this mountain was a beautiful fountain and beside it the tree of life. I fell down on my knees at the foot of this mountain Cried out, Odin, what must I do? I want to climb up and see Want to learn from this tree That grows so clear in my view top of this mountain saying child these are my rooms just start with Fehu and climb on upward between the etheric and root Odin's advice and the higher I got the harder I climb
lips in my hand Step aside, little woman My horses won't stand Jack a diamond, Jack a diamond, I've known you from all. You are my four pockets of my silver and my gold. She's a pretty bird, she wobbles as she flies, she'll cause you no trouble, and she'll tell you no lies. Welcome to Odin's Alchemy. So this week, uh, we're going to talk about uh, Odin's Alchemy uh, being brought to you by Paraplegic Coffee. These guys, their, their coffee is absolutely fantastic. Uh, I could literally smell that through the bag uh, when I was in the post office. I was standing in front of the box. I was like, oh, the coffee's what's in there. Uh, and that is some wicked strong coffee and uh really good really you can just smell that and their uh their uh blends are absolutely hilarious my favorite is the helen keller roast that's uh that cracks me up <laughs> but uh everybody go ahead and go check out paraplegic coffee uh if you want to order some it's 410 and I uh, support the Bears because that is just an absolutely fantastic community that is out there trying to uh, develop a different world. So, love you guys. Today, we have the great pleasure of the return of Rachel. She is uh, going to be with us for the duration. And Rachel and I have decided we're going to go through the uh, Poetic Edda and uh, some of the other... Uh, Scandinavian, Germanic, uh, Old Norse uh, books and go through them, read the stories like I had started to do, only with uh, Rachel's perspective added. So it's not just this overwhelmingly masculine perspective and uh, the attempted uh, horrible guess at the, the feminine side of things. <laughs> so we get the pleasure of Rachel and also we uh rachel and i have decided that we're uh gonna go through different books also so uh each of us is going to get a different book and uh go through the different versions and then we'll go through what the stories mean and try and get a more full understanding of things and uh also we're going to get some of the books that are less well known and try and just get uh stop 
try and get to the root of things rather than uh, just throwing out feelings. Uh, you'd be shocked how many of these uh, channels that want to throw out information that they got from somebody else who even sometimes got it from somebody else and when the the books are fairly easy to obtain uh and just look at yourself so if you wanna you want the right stand understandings you just go right to the source so we're going to go through the different source materials and uh go do that um anybody that wants to catch rachel rachel please uh, go ahead and throw your information out yeah i'm on mines at valkyrie sparks and i have sunforge on telegram probably the best place to yeah. find me <laughs> absolutely and rachel does some really cool art so if everybody wants to check uh rachel's art out that's that's pretty awesome too uh and she shows that off over on telegram so the copy that i have is uh the lee hollander version of the poetic edit that we're going to go through and which one did you have rachel i have the one translated by jeremy dodds Jeremy Dodds, very nice. What year was yours, by the way? I'm looking, this one says, the oldest date in here is 1974, um, but I think this one came out in 2014. Oh, and this one's the original copyright is 62. Um, this is, I think, the eighth printing of it. Mine, <laughs> it says, uh, apparently mine, uh, some point in time was owned by the Billy name goat clinic clinic. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Some yeah. light reading. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, Oh, good thing. Good thing to have in the goat clinic. That's, that's good stuff. All right. Well, um, we're going to skip the introductions on these. Um, since Rachel and I yeah. are both reading, uh, a different copy. And so, <clears throat> I'm not going to stop and break down anything in the initial reading and I'm going to flat out say I didn't sit and uh, I'm not uh, this I believe is the Old Norse um, I'm not an Old Norse expert I'm not going to try and uh, spend a lot of time on the pronunciations I'm definitely going to fuck some of them up severely uh, you know, if you want to uh, correct me on that, you can absolutely feel free. I'm not sure how that's going to type out and make me say it better because uh, <laughs> the way it's pronounced and the way I read it is not necessarily the same, but whatever. Uh, but I'll, I'll do my best here. But so I'll go ahead and kick it off. Hear me, all ye hallowed beings, both high and low, of Heimdall's children, thou, thou <clears throat> wilt all father that I well set forth the fates of the world, which as first I recall. I call to mind the kin of Etons, which long ago did give me life. Nine worlds I know, the nine abodes of the glorious world tree, the ground beneath. In the earliest times did Ymir live, was nor sea nor land, nor salty waves, neither earth was there, nor upper heaven, but a gaping nothing and green things nowhere. Was the land then lifted aloft by birth sons who made Midgard the matchless earth, shone from the south, the sun on dry land, on the ground they grew, the green sword soft. From the south, the sun, by the side of the moon, heaved his right hand over heaven's rim. The sun knew not what seat he had. The stars knew not what stead they held. The moon knew not what might she had. Then gathered together, the cat's ass, which must always try and step on my computer. That's why my hand's up here. <laughs> then gathered together, the gods for counsel, the holy at the holy hosts, and held converse. To night and new moon, their names they gave, the morning named, and midday also, forenoon and evening, to order the year. On Itha plain met the mighty gods, shrines and temples, 
they timbered high. They founded forges to fashion gold. Tongs they did shape and tools they made. Played at draughts in the garth. Right glad they were, nor aught lacked they, of lustrous gold till maidens three from the thirses came, awful in might from Ettenholm. To the course they came, kind and mighty, from the gathered gods, three great Asir. On the land they found of little strength, ask an embla, unfaded yet. Since they possessed, soul they had not, or since they possessed not, soul they had not, being nor bearing, nor blooming hue. Soul gave Odin, sense gave Hornir, being Lothar, and blooming hue. And ash I know, high Yggdrasil, the mighty tree, Moist with white dews, thence come the th the floods that fall adown. Evergreen or tops, earth swell this tree. Thence wise maidens, three betake them, under spreading boughs, their bower stands. Scald the third, or <clears throat> earth, one is height, the other verandi. Scald the third, they scores did cut, they oz did make, they lives did choose for the children of men, they marked their fates. I ween the first war in the world was this when the gods Gulveg gashed with their spears, and in the hall of Har burned her three times, burned they. Thrice reborn, ever and anon, even now she liveth. Height was she height, <clears throat> where to the houses she came, the wise seeress, and witchcraft plied, cast spells where she stood, cast spells on the mind, to wicked women she was welcome ever. Then gathered together the gods for counsel, the holy hosts, and held converse. Should the seer a truce with tribute by, or should all gods share in the feast? His spear had Odin sped over the host. The first of feuds was thus fought in the world, was broken in battle, the breastwork of Asgard, fighting Venir, trod the field of battle. Then gathered together the gods for counsel, the holy hosts, and held converse, who had filled the air with foul treason and the uncouth Ettens, oath's wife given. Thui Thor then overthrew the foe, he seldom sits of such, <clears throat> when of such he hears, where sworn oaths broken in solemn vows, God's plighted troth, the pledge is given. Where Heimdall's horn is hid, she knows, under heaven touching, holy world tree. On it are shed the flowery falls from Fjolnir's pledge, know ye further or how? Alone she sat when the Lord of gods, Odin of old, her eye did seek. What seekest to know? Why summon me? Well, I, Yig. Where thy eye is hidden, or well I know, well know I, Yig, where thy eye is hidden, in the wondrous well of Mimir. Each morn Mimir his mead doth drink, out of Fjolnir's pledge. Know ye further, or how? Gave Yig to her, arm rings and gems, for her seer's sight and soothsaying. The face I fathom, yet further I see, see far and wide. The world's about. The Valkyrie's flock from afar she beholds, ready to ride to the realm of men. Scold her shield, Skogel likewise, Guth, Hild, Gondil, 
and Gears Gogo are thus are for thus our height. Hergens maidens ready to ride or red feet battlefields. I saw for Balder the blessed God, Yig's dearest son, what doom is hidden, green and glossy, there grow aloft the trees among the mistletoe. The slender seeming sapling became a fell weapon when flung by Hoth. But Baldur's brother was born full soon. But one night old slew him Od Odin's son. Neither cleansed his hands nor combed his hair till Baldur's slayer he sent to hell. But Frigg did weep in Fenselir the fateful deed. Know ye further or how? A captive lies in the kettle grove, like to lawless Loki in shape. There sits Sigyn, full sad in mind, by her fettered mate. Know ye further or how? From the east there flows, through Festerdales and steam height slith, filled with swords and knives. Waist deep wade there, through water swift, waist Waste torn men and murderous eke those who betrayed a trusted friend's wife. There Nas Nighog. Naked corpses, there the wolf rends men. Wit ye more or how? Stood in the north on the Nitha fields, a dwelling golden, which the dwarves did own. Another stood on Ulknir, that ends beer hall. Who is Brimir Height? A hall she saw from the sun so far on the strand's shore, turned north to its doors, drops of poison drip through the louver. Its walls are clad with coiling snakes. In the east sat the old one in the iron woods, bred there by the bad brood of Fenrir. Will one of these, worse than they all, the sun swallow? In a seeming in seeming a wolf. He feeds on the flesh of fallen men with their blood sullies, the seat of the gods. Will grow swart the sunshine in summers thereafter, the weather woe bringing. Do ye whip more? Or how? His harp striking on hill, there sat gladsome Egther. He who guards the ogress o'er him, <clears throat> o'er him gaily, in the gallows tree crowed the fair red cock, which fell our height. Crowed o'er the gods, Gullung Kambi, wakes, wakes, the, wakes he the heroes who with Hirjan <clears throat> dwell, another crows. The earth beneath in the halls of hell of hue dark red. Garm bays loudly before Nip before Nip cave, breaks his fetters and runs free and freely runs. The fates I fathom, yet further I see of the mighty gods, the engulfing doom. Brother will battle to the bloody end, and sisters' sons their sib betray. Woe woes in the world. Much wantonness, axe rage, sword rage, sunder she, sundered shields, wind age, wolf age, ere the, wor the world crumbles. Will no spear of man spare the other? Mimir's sons dance, the downfall bodes, when blares the gleaming old Yellerhorn. Loud blows Heimdall with horn aloft, and hell's dark hall horror spreadeth. Once more Odin with Mim's head speaketh, ere Sirt Sib swallows him. Trembles the towering tree Yggdrasil, its leaves sow loudly, and leashed is the Etten. What ails the Asir and what the Elfs? In uproar, in uproar all Ettens as the Asir met. At the gates of their grots, the wise dwarfs groan. In their fell fastnesses, fastnesses, <laughs> wit ye further or how? 
Garm bays loudly before Nipicave breaks his fetters and runs freely. I fath the fates I fathom, yet further I see of the mighty gods, the engulfing doom. Fair Harm, Fair Hrim from the east, holding his shield, the Midgard worm in mighty rage, scatters the waves, screams the eagle, his nib tears the dead. Negelfar loosens. Ships assail from ships assail from the east with the shades from hell. Over the or the ocean stream steers it Loki. In the wake of the wolf rush witless hordes who are baleful who are who with baleful blists brother do fair. Come cert from the south with the singer of twigs, the war god sword, like a sun doth shine. The tall hills totter. The, and trolls stagger, men fell to fare to hell, the heavens rive. Another woe awaiteth Hlin when forth goes Odin to fight the wolf, and the slayer of Beli to battle with Surt, then Frigg's husband will fall life, will fall lifeless. Strides forth Vidar, Balfather's son, the fearless fighter. Fenrir to slay, to the heart he hews the Vethrung's Veth son, avenged is then Vidar's father. <clears throat> Comes then Mjolnir, mighty wielder, gapes the grizzly, earth girdling serpent, when strides forth Tor to slay the worm, mighty mauls Midgar's warder. Shall all whites in the world wander from home? Back falls nine steps. Fjorgen's offspring, nor fears for his fame from the frightful worm. Neath sea the land sinketh, the sun dimmeth. From the heavens fall, the fair bright stars gusheth forth steam. And gutting fire to the very heaven soar the hurtling flames. Garm bays loudly before the nip of cave. And puppies fight fiercely in the spring morning. Garm bays loudly before the nip, nip of cave, breaks his fetters and freely runs. The fates I fathom, yet further I see of the mighty gods, the engulfing doom. I see green again with growing things. The earth arise from out of the sea. Fell torrents flow, overflies them the eagle on hoar highlands, which hunts the, for fish. Again the Asir on Itha plain meet and speak of the mighty Midgard worm. Go over, again, go over the great world doom in Thimboltir's unfathomed runes. Then in the grass, the golden figures, the fame, the far famed ones will be found again, which they had owned in olden days. On unsown acres, the ears will grow. All ill grow better. Will Balder come then? Both he and Hoth will Hrupt Hall dwell. Sounded like I was clearing my throat. Uh, the war gods fame. Do ye whip more? Or how? Then will Honir handle the blood wands, and Yig's brother's sons will forever dwell in wind home. Do ye wit more? Or how? I see a hall then, the sun more fair, thatched with red gold, which is Gimli height. There will the gods, all guiltless thrown, and live forever in ease and bliss. A down cometh to the doom of the world, the great Godhead which governs all. Cometh the darksome, dragging, flying, Nithog upward from the Nitha fells. He bears in his pinions as the plains he <clears throat> overflies, naked corpses, corpses, now he will sink. And that is the prophecy of the seer, Cirrus from Mine is going to sound very different. 
fantastic. I like that <laughs> one. I like that one. It seems for, for, for the seer of the prophecies, pro, for the seer uh, prophecy, <laughs> I have blood orange today instead of just normal orange. Perfect. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Super appropriate. <laughs> yeah. I feel like. I can't wait to hear this. Okay, this is going to be interesting. Shift now, you sacred ones, all creeds of Heimdall's sons. Cadaver father, I'll try to retell tales of the ancients and the long gone gods. I recall being reared by Jotuns in days long gone. If I look back, I recall nine worlds, nine wood witches, that renowned tree of fate below the earth. Ymir struck, struck camp when time began. No land, sand, or sea folding on itself. No sky, earth, or grass swaying atop its girth. Only the cavern of chaos's gaping gulf. First, Burr's sons hung the earth's shelves, molding Midgard as a southern sun, soaked the stone pillars of that place, and a lush green grew across the ground. Moon's sister, sun in her southern reach, threw her right hand over heaven's rim. Where would she hammer her hall in place? The stars knew not of their jurisdiction, and the moon knew not of its clout. The glorious gods sat on their thrones of fate, and a council was held to contemplate this. To keep track of the years, they named morning, noon, and night. They named afternoon. They named twilight. On Idaval, the Aesir amassed to raise stored, storied temples and altar slabs to smithy tongs and tools and fashion precious pieces in their flaming forges. In the meadow, they were gleeful over board games. Their coffers overflowed with gold until three giant girls came out of Jotunheim. The glorious gods sat on their thrones of fate and a council was held to contemplate this. Who'd hew a horde of dwarves from Bremir's sea blood and Blaine's dark limbs? Moltzugnir was made the highest, the mightiest dwarf and Durin the second. Durin declared that the gods would pull many more man-like dwarves out of the earth. And here's all the names of the dwarves. <laughs> Nai and Nidi, Nordi, Sudri, Austri, Vestri, Althjof, Valin, Nar and Nain, Nipping, Dane, Bifur, Bofur, Umber, Nori, Ann and Or, I, Mjothfotnir, Vig and Gandalf, Vindolf, Thrain, Threk and Thorin, Thror. <laughs> You're laughing way too hard about it. <laughs> oh, so glad that I didn't have the version with all that. <laughs> oh, I was like, how did you <gasps> miss this? <laughs> that that yeah. definitely yeah. immediately clears up the difference in uh, uh, before we started. Rachel and I were doing some just basic comparisons. And her version has more verses than mine. So that, that immediately clears that is, up. Yeah. <laughs> so there's also, in case you guys need more names, name ideas for your RPGs, Vit and Lit, Mir and Mirath, but then Regan and Relsvald added others. Fili, Kili, Hundin, Nali, Heptafili, Hanar, Spire, Brar, Hornbori, Greg and Loni, Arvang, Yari, and Iken Skeldi. And that's Valin's dwarf throng. These folk of Lofar were also added to the fray, people of the Petrus Halls, those of Arvang and Yorvalir, Drupnir and Dokbasir, Hor Hugsbori, Lang, Gloin, Dori, Ori, Doof, and Vari, Skirvir, Gervir. <laughs> There's only a few more. <laughs> Skafith, I, Alf, and Ingvi, Iken, Skaldi, Fjallar, and Frosty, Fifth, and Ginnar. As long as there's the earth, 
will remember the Lofars forever. Then three potent and pleasant Aesir were sent to earth from the council. On land they found ash and embla, both brittle, both fateless and impotent. They were breathless, they were vigorless, without warmth, immobile. So Odin gave breath, Hynir gave zeal, and Loder warmed them brightening their complexions. I know of an ash called Yggdrasil, that one tree, a sky-high tree mired in white muck. From it drop the dews that drench the valleys. It rises, always green, above Erd's well. And from the aquifer below the tree came three gifted girls, first Erd, then Verdandi, and finally Skuld. They carved wooden slips, they laid down laws, plotted and formed the fates of humankind. I can recall the war. They filled Gulvig full of spears, dragged her to the High One's Hall and burnt her. Three times they roasted her and three times she was reborn. When she turned up at their houses, they called her Hyde, a sorceress with foresight, making magic when she wanted, making trans magic. She had a way with wands. She was adored by wicked women. The glorious gods sat on their thrones of fate, and a council was held to contemplate this. Are the Aesir expected to share their tributes, or are all the gods to make sacrifices? Odin flung his spear into the heart of the Horde, and the first war of the world began. The Vanir burst the Aesir's buttresses, and with war runes bound across the plains. The glorious gods sat on their thrones of fate, and a council was held to contemplate this who had offered Od's bride to the Jotuns and corrupted the entire sky with cruelty. Wrath, Swole, and Thor alone swung the blows that toppled his foes, not one to rest when he'd heard oaths, affidavits and solemn vows shattered, all that's pledged between allies soured. Heimdall's hearing is hidden beneath the dazzling divine tree. This she knows, this she sees, a muddied river raging from the cadaver father's oaths. Now do you know or not? She sat out alone when the old one came, the terror from the Aesir leered into her eyes and said, Why do you hound me so? Why do you ask me? I know all. I know your eye is hidden in the famous fountain of Mimir. Mimir swallows the meat of Odin's creed each dawn. Now do you know or not? The warlord gave her rings and necklets. She gave him wise words and sorcery staves. She saw all, the world wide before her eyes. Before her eyes, Valkyrie arrived from far and wide. The warlord's ladies, ripe to ride, Skuld and Skogol brandished shields, followed by Guth, Hild, Gondul, and Gerskogol. Ripe to ride over all the worlds, I see Odin's son Balder bloodied, his fate fixed, and blooming above the plains, fair and full at full height, mighty mistletoe hung. From a slender sprig, hold sharpened a dangerous dart and shot it. And at only one evening old, Balder's brother, Odin's quick-born son, learned how to slay. He wouldn't wash his hands. He kept his hair unkempt until he laid Balder's slayer on the pyre. Frigg wept in Fenselrir due to Valhalla's gloom. Now do you know or not? Then the strongest of shackles were woven, the most binding of bonds out of Vali's own entrails. She sees a captive laid out that looks a lot like Loki's fiendish figure. Sigyn sits joyless over her husband. Now do you know or not? From the east, a river runs full of knives and swords that's named Slid. In the north, on Nidvalir, sat a golden hall raised by Sindri's kin. A second hall, an Oklamir, it was that Jotun's, Jotun Brimir's ball, beer hall, okay. <laughs> and far from the sun, she sees another hall with northward doors sitting on Nostrand, a hall fashioned from serpent spines, venom falling through its roof holes. And wading in torrential streams, she sees murderers and oath breakers men who cuckold friends. Here Nidog sucks on corpses while the wolf shreds the slain to ribbons. Now do you know or not? 
eastward in Yarnfield, an old Eugenus suckles Fenrir's litter, and of all and of all the certain one will arise in a monster's disguise. He'll be the snatcher of the moon. The blood of the doomed pulses in him, slopping the walls of the power's halls with rosy gore. Next summer, the sun blackens, the weather gets wicked. Now do you know or not? Gleeful Egthir, the Jotunus herdsman, lolls on a mound top and plucks his harp as a crow as a cock crows in Fagrand. That red, red cock called Fiala. There, Gulenkam crows over the Aesir, waking the warlord's warriors, and yet another cock falls beneath the earth. A scorched red cock in the halls of hell. Garm howls at the mouth of Nipfaller, and the ravenous one breaks his bonds and bounds free. She is full of wisdom. Can I, I can see farther still to the fate of the grim triumph gods. Brother getting brother, sister, brother on sister, violating bonds and hardening the world further with whoring. Wolf time, wind time, axe time, sword time, shields high time, as the world shatters and no one is spared by anyone. In jest, men's sons kindle the sprig of fate in the mouth of the ancient Gjallarhorn. Heimdall blows the high-held horn hard, and Odin speaks through men's head. And the upright ash, Yggdrasil, quakes, and the ancient tree groans as it births a Jotun. Those on the hell road are fearful as Surt's kin swallow it whole. And what of the Aesir? What of the elves? All of Jotunheim moans. The Aesir go to council. Dwarves whisper before their stone doors. These lords of the cliff face. Now do you know or not? Garm howls at the mouth of Nymphalir. The ravenous one breaks his bonds and bounds free. She is full of wisdom. I can see farther still to the fate of the grim triumph gods. From the east, Hrim drives with his shield before him. Jormungandr flails, making waves. The eagle screams and with its pale beak rips corpses, while Njagfar, Njagfar slips its moorings. From the east, Loki will helm that ship across seas with Muspel's horde on board. All those monstrous kin along with the ravenous ones. And Bailey's brother among them. Surt arrives from the south with a branch breaker the cadaver's son shimmering off his sword. Cliff walls smash, troll brides smash. Warriors go under the hell road as skies cleave. Then the second of Frigg's grief occurs when Odin goes against the wolf. The bright slayer of Beli goes against Surt, and all Frigg's cherished ones fall. So the warlord's son, Vidar, goes against the slaughter beast. He sinks his sword into the heart of Loki's kin, avenging his father. Then the earth girder gapes over the entire sky, giant jaws wide in doomful yawn. Odin's son Thor goes against the serpent when Vidar's father is slain along the wolf. Then the renowned son of Hilden comes to scrap with this serpent. Odin's son, the guardian of Midgard, wails with wrath and every warrior now quits his home. Fjorgen's son steps nine steps, but is finished by that serpent who has no fear of malice. Sun blackens and the earth sinks into the sea. Brilliant stars scatter across the sky. Flames lap against the world tree. Flames lap against the sky itself. The hound Garm howls at the gates of Yipfilir. Breaks his bindings and bounds free. I am to the brim with wisdom, but I can see ahead to all the gods lying very dead. Then she sees the earth bobbing up for a second time from the seas. Waterfalls gush as the, an eagle hunts fish down the mountain streams. Then the Aesir meet on Idaval, judging the earth grinder, memorializing those memorable events and the mighty one's runes. 
One day, the golden game pieces of the gods will miraculously be found in the grass, those that in days long gone were theirs. Then the fallow fields will sprout. Then the hurt will he all heal. Balder will come back. The slaughter gods, Hold and Balder, will spend their days pursuing pleasure. And Hengrir will pick wooden slips for prophecies. And the prophecy of two brothers will repopulate the windy world. Now do you know or not? She sees that a golden, a gold thatched hall at Gimli, more brilliant than the sun. There faithful folk live, the faithful spending their days pursuing pleasure. And from high on the mighty one will come to reign over all. A dark dragon flaps up from night of fjall and shimmering serpent Nidog swimming over the plains her wing folds crammed with corpses. Now I must sink. Hmm. So, <laughs> you all see why we uh, decided to do the numerous versions of the stories. And you can see that depending on uh, the translator and what the translator thought was important, what the translator thought was proper, um even today's uh you know currently everybody really uh thinks jackson crawford is just the best and he admits in there he leaves out parts he does things like that so this is uh something that every translator does and so for you to get a more uh full understanding of what we got going on you end up doing uh multiple versions and uh having to go through a lot of different things if you if you really want to get down and study it um now you can see rachel's version was a, a slightly newer version i think what was it like 10 years was the original copyright it's like 10 12 years something like that not too much different uh this version they're uh keeping to the more old english type uh so it's more like uh the king james bible type thing where they're really sticking to that old language um where rachel's it seems like they uh went with a newer language um seemed like she had less odd words in there and uh then also now and i noticed this uh, and i've read the part about the dwarfs this is part of why i was kind of surprised when that wasn't there um but here it jumps from verse 8 to 17. uh let's see if we can get this in here you can see it jumps from verse 8 to 17 and so that whole part about the dwarves is just these dots and it doesn't even state you know hey uh i put this somewhere else because i think dwarves are stupid or <laughs> something like that you know um i'm not a fan <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it just, if your person doesn't look over to the left to look at the number count of the verse, you'll never notice that uh, that there was nine verses just axed out of here. Uh, these aren't important. Um, but even with nine verses axed out, uh, the difference between Rachel's version and this one uh, is not nine verses. So there's things in here that I noticed immediately. So now uh, we'll kind of go through this. So the first verse is here, you know, hear me, all of Heimdall's children. Um, talks about the all father, both, uh, both were kind of the same, nothing real impressive there. Uh, Heimdall is considered the father of, uh, of humans, even though he's not the one that made humans. He's kind of the over, watches over humans. He's the one who made the division of the three classes of humans. Um, so, which wasn't necessarily like the three classes that we have today uh, or the classes that we have today where we have these ultra rich super kings who don't do anything and uh, uh, plus peasants that have no rights and just can't do anything. It was more like the landowner his right hand man and then the other helpers everybody's still working together but there's definitely a hierarchy of the way people sit and the fact is is a lot of times the people on that helper level couldn't make the decisions the other that high end uh is making and the high end a lot of times can't do the work the other ones can do 
uh, it's a very human understanding of things. So I don't think is too much reason to go through that one anymore. Um, but it says, I will, I will set forth the face, fates of the world, blah, blah. He's talking about the uh, prophecy of the seer, seeress. She's getting ready to lay out how the world's going to play out for him. Um, which this is a, obviously this is one of the most uh, highly controversial poems because of that. Because you're talking about prophecy. You're talking about all kinds of weird things. Um, there's a lot of things in here that, depending on the version especially, there's a lot of different contradictions to some of the other things. Uh, I call to mind the kin of Etons, uh, the numerous giants, which long ago did give me life. Nine worlds, I know the nine abodes of the glorious world tree and the ground beneath. So it's just explaining uh, uh, the way the world is set up currently. And your version's about the same for that second verse, Rachel? Yeah, I think for the second one. Because, yeah, because she talks yeah. about being reared by a giant okay, mm -hmm. so that, mm -hmm. which i think this is still the the all father himself referring to himself which he is the the child of, di of giants they gave him life he knows nine worlds nine abodes there was a word in yours uh that was weird um it says um nine wood witches yeah that was it wood mm -hmm. witches that was an interesting word wasn't it uh, which, you know, that worlds inside the tree, which that maybe that's that would be what a wood witch is, is a world inside the tree. Um, the nine abodes of the glorious world tree. So I call them a wood witch. That's interesting. Yeah, um, I thought that was interesting. And then it's nine, see. too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, in a lot of, I know in a, some stuff that's coming out, like you hear about the nine a lot. Um, yeah, like even in the emerald tablets, there's like a council of nine that sits beneath the earth. So yeah, so I think the number yep. nine. And then and then it's always, <laughs> and then it's very interesting because then it's uh, three levels and nine. Oh shit, Lucas is twenty seven. I got to talk to him about that. Oh, I got to remember to talk to him about that afterwards. Damn it, uh, the three levels of nine. Uh, Oh, damn it. That got me I'm all sidetracked. I'm going to write it down anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I was just doing uh, math stuff last night, so this is fresh in my brain. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. And then eight is also then mentioned a lot of times in the in the heathen co cosmology because then eight is you're standing on one of the worlds. There's eight paths. This is why Schleppner has eight legs, things like that, because there is nine worlds, but from one of those worlds, there's only eight other worlds to go to. So there's eight paths um, in between them. You're always having to be standing on one and you're the ninth in that case. So th this is a very uh, typical occult thing. Uh, that movie I just watched on uh, Jared's show, which if everybody hasn't checked out Jared's show, it's a uh, conspiracy cinema. Um, and he had me watch this uh, uh, movie and then this was nine people that went up and tried to go through the test and all that. So that was interesting too. So then the third verse is in the earliest times, Ymir lives. Uh, there wasn't sea or waves, earth, heavens. There wasn't any of that stuff. So that's pretty simple. Um, not really much to it. Uh, this was, it's talking about uh, Ymir lived. So the, the, Muspelheim and Niflheim had already been pulled together, but it's from the pieces of Ymir that uh, the world was crafted. So they're talking about approximately that time period. Um, was the land then lifted aloft by Burr's sons uh, who made Midgard the matchless earth and shone from the south, the sun on dry land, on the ground then grew the green, the green sword soft. Which uh, your, your wording was really interesting too. I caught that again right away. It sounded the two verses were very similar in that. So this is one of the things that's going to be interesting because later uh, it switches over to Odin, Hornir, and Lothar. But here they're talking about Odin, Vili, and Ve, the three sons, uh, as Burr's sons. 
so it's very interesting. This is where you start seeing some of the oddness that comes out in some of these translations. Um, but that's who they're talking about is Burr's sons uh, from that. And that he they made Midgard. And here's some of the pieces of Midgard. Uh, that's about your fourth verse. Um, I feel like it kind of bounces a little bit. But yeah, it's about the fourth. And then it talks about... Um, the sun and the moon through five. Yep, yep. I got sun five. and the moon through five. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah, now thought... a couple things that I find interesting immediately is from the south, the sun. Mm -hmm. So by the side of the moon, where n normal thought process is, is that the moon, sun and moon would be to the north. That they would be up, up is north. That's our typical thought process. I, th I find that absolutely fascinating. And then uh, we have talked a little bit, uh, not on shows, just in private, about the box saga. And one of the things I find fascinating in the box saga is, according to them, Asgard is down uh, Helsinki. So you go down uh, into this hole in Helsinki to get to uh, Asgard. So rather than going up as classic thinking would be, it would be, it's go down. And then also in the stories that have the meeting of Muspelheim and Niflheim, Muspelheim is to the south. So very fascinating. Um, mm. by, the side of, by the side of the moon, so the moon and the sun are approximately together heaved his right hand over heaven's rim and then it's then it's like well the sun and the moon existed and the stars existed but they didn't know what the hell they were doing they were just kind of like hanging out doing whatever like woo, like a pinball machine and i believe your version was pretty much the same thing yeah yeah it used much fancier language the stars didn't know their jurisdiction <laughs> I, I yeah i did like that i did like that because it uh it did sound a little fancier because mine is what seat he had. Now, what's mm -hmm. interesting is, now, here's another thing. And a lot of people wouldn't notice this because they're into a cult. Now, I want to read your version because I don't remember if I heard this in yours. The sun knew not what seat he had. The stars knew not what stead they had. And the moon knew not what might she had. So here they're trying to put the sun and the moon as feminine and masculine, which this gentleman that did this is deaf is Christian. And there's some other parts that we're going to get into later um, that'll tell you that. Uh, but this guy's Christian. So he made this reversal where in Norse cosmology, the moon is Mani in a man and the sun is soul in a woman. And so this, this is part of where I talk about where inter interpreters who don't live the life and aren't actually practicing in this are going to bleed over their belief systems into this. So here you automatically already see where that reversal has happened, even though specifically in the stories, it's not like that. Um, in your version, does it do that? Um, a little bit, but not... Not too terribly, because in this one, the sun, both the sun and moon are feminine. Um, it has the moon's sister. Oh, so very interesting. As far as I can tell, I okay, couldn't tell the if the moon, I couldn't tell. If so the moon it said the moon's sister, right? sister. So that, so does it specifically state the moon is being female because the moon's, or the sun being female because the moon's Let me sister. That's yeah, really says, only sexing one of them. Yeah, I think it's really only that the sun is female because it says the moon's sister, the sun, because it, it just only talks about the sun. She right, so then the moon right could be either one. Yeah. Right, then it doesn't really sex it, but it does put the sun as female. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As opposed to this version where specifically it says the sun knew not what seat he had. So very interesting um and again why we're doing this and going through this like this and from an occult version that's a really key thing to understanding um 
again, this this gentleman here then apparently uh, took and bled his Christian ideas into that. So then the next one is, then gathered the gods for counsel, the holy hosts, they held converse, they gave the tonight and new moon their names they gave, morning, midday, forenoon, and evening to order the year. So that's interesting because I was counting with yours, night and new moon, morning, midday, forenoon, and evening. That's six. And I only think I heard four in yours. Five. Because there's five? Morning, morning, noon, and night, afternoon, and twilight. Yeah. So that's, again, interesting, uh, again, showing that I'm not sure that there's any type of, you know, real, like, any type of, like, attempt to make things, you know, twisted or anything like that. But this is just the interpreter's understandings. And you can see this is vastly different. They have five different time periods. Now, night would seem to go with these other ones, but new moon that that that's not uh, uh doesn't really go in with a time of a day evening. no they have evening in there also forenoon and evening is in there so very very interesting but we can see they're just naming the time as a day now where the act where it actually the reality of it that's where that falls that's going to be very interesting i'd like to if i read if i could read these languages myself which i'm not an interpreter then I could look at the original source material and see what's because because it's hard to imagine that there was five time frames or tick six time frames stated somebody's done something here and it's not right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so on Itha Plain met the mighty gods, shrines and temples. They timbered high. They founded forges to fashion gold, tongs they made and tools they made. Itha Plain. Uh, so then you go to Itha Plain, and that just means the shining plain or the splendorous plain. Uh, uh, yours, it wasn't timbers, though. Wasn't yours like stonework? It was like, let's see, the mass. Yeah, storied temples and altar slabs. See, I got shrines and temples, but then I've got, they timbered high, which would, make you mm. think like a, a, a more of a a great hall a great mm -hmm. a great wooden hall not necessarily where yours i guess i more envisioned stone temple type things not really specifically wood but then it's just basically they made tools they did stuff does yours specifically mention fashioning gold not gold specifically but smithy tongs and tools fashion precious pieces and their flaming forges so that's probably why it sounds precious like stone yeah it just says precious so mm -hmm. that can definitely be gold it could be silver it could be right right you know. anything precious at that mm -hmm. point so that's really Nothing. less specific uh, a whole lot less specific especially when we start getting further into the stories that's a whole lot less specific so then played at drought Droughts in the Garth. So Droughts is a game similar to Checkers with 12 pieces. Um, they're not 100% sure how that worked. Uh, square And uh, the Garth is just a square yard, which you can imagine in castle areas where little knights in training or, uh, you know, people drank tea, played little board games. Right glad they were. I like that. It's all of a sudden that sounds like straight English. Right glad they were. It, nor ought they lack or not ought lacked they like i don't know why that just sounds like something out of like a freaking old english movie like little kids walking around saying crap like that of lustrous gold till till maidens three from the thurses came awful in might from etten home so thurses are uh, daughters of these giant chieftains etten homes the giant home uh, the giant's home uh, before these three ladies came, they were just kind of hanging out, playing with gold, playing games, having a gas. Uh, that that about what you got going on over there? Yeah, yeah. they were having a good time. <laughs> you betcha. It was a Gleeful party. Gleeful over them. board games. 
<laughs> gleeful. You know, they, they liked board games better than we do today. I remember when I was a kid, board games were very popular. Uh, yeah. You know, very emotional about board games. God, like Risk, Risk would, Risk would like cause a family drama. <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> So here we're going to have to cut off and with me and just switch over to Rachel, which is a night which it works out anyways. And we can only talk about Rachel's because here's where mine decides to cut out uh, versus nine through 16. And because this guy's apparently a dwarf racist. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> decided yeah. that we don't need that. All the dwarves. I was thinking about that. Somebody. Uh, when somewhere. you were reading it, also I was ticking off the some of the names because there's a chunk of them that, you know, who knows what the hell's going on or where that is. And I've even heard some talks about some of that and read some different articles on it. Um, you know, and they're just trying to match it up to different names or or words in Old Norse or whatever language. Like, so they're just saying a bunch of things. But then there's some of them that are distinctly characters from the stories like Anvari, you said, Regan, you said, um, and those are uh, from the story where uh, Odin and Loki uh, go and uh, kill the otter and then end up getting uh, Anvari's horde to uh, Regan's father. And then Regan's father is the dwarf that then Regan and his brother, I think, kill the father and then... Uh, not Regan, but Fafnir ends up with the with the ring and the hoard that was given to the. We'll get there, <laughs> but yeah. I was checking off some of those and and seeing which ones were in the I recognized from other stories. So, but anyways, go ahead. No, that's good because I think <laughs> um, if you didn't know they were in other stories, people would be like, "Why mention these guys at all?" Right. So I wonder if it has to do with um, dense lineage. Mm -hmm. You know, it goes. Oh, hundred percent. Sons of the dark, sons of the deep, the people who came from the earth. Like, you don't get much more original than the dwarves. <laughs> well, and, and when you look at some of the uh, stories, the dwarves, the description of them is they're almost yotes. Mm -hmm. So even though we think of this thing of a uh, diminutive size and they may be, it doesn't really tell you whether it, what size they are because it doesn't describe that, but in mentality and temperament, they're close to a Jotun. So what you have is, is Jotun's your primal, primal uh, elemental force. And a dwarf is like an elemental force with brains. So it's just a, a step up from that it's still going to kind of be like an elemental force where it, it's kind of a grumpy fuck and, and, and uh, probably pretty tricky, uh, very root thoughty, uh, very root thought. Um, we'll get, we'll get into other stories like where Freya uh, goes and asks a favor for the dwarves. And depending on the story you're reading, the dwarves get to grope her and kiss her or have sex with her or, a number of different things. They're all just very, uh, very root, you know, like uh, you're the, this is the, the, the basically the, the representative, even though uh, it's not Odin's wife, this is kind of the queen of the, the Asir, you know, that's whenever all the stories it's Freya they're after. And uh, so you would certainly think that of Freya, these dwarves could think of something better than a, than a little grope to ask for, but because they are these root, being stuck in that mind that's all they can really think about um but with that they have lots of earthy wisdom and they can make really uh complicated uh contraptions really uh, amazing things because they're very earthy very uh because they're a step above that giant level um so when you're thinking of dwarves you're you, it's more on the Jotun side is the way that's explained yeah i like that a lot and I actually really like that they have this lineage in here because it's, yep. you don't find this a lot in a lot of Northern stories that I've ever seen. I mean, there are whole chapters on this in the Bible. <laughs> right. You know, who's keeping track of, of family trees and lineages. And so this, I think, is really unique and it's really kind of cool to see. 
also if we're gonna you know take it on oh exactly exactly and, and, and try and flesh it out completely and also another thing i think to tie is important is rachel and i are going to get into some other books later not all of the countries uh stories portray all of these as gods initially so some of these stories odin was a human that ends up evolving into a god and it's very it's pretty clear about that so this is where then that these lineages would be very important because that one like that's the, the swedish version um odin starts out as a human and becomes a god but then the humans, his family that gets left behind is supposedly then the Swedish royal line. And mm -hmm. then they're supposedly direct descendants of Odin who moved from this plane into godhood. So uh, very different. So in some of these things, this lineage is very important. And in the Bible, it's very important because a lot of people don't realize that like that Old Testament, only Hebrews are the chosen ones of their God. And so if you aren't born of that lineage, you aren't one of them. And you're just here to be a goyim or a slave to them. And so that's a very important thing to them. And then not only does that keep track of that, but then inside of that, there's also the inheriting line and the non-inheriting line who have different functions. So the inheriting line is going to be the royal line. And then as the brothers and sisters who aren't inheriting of the royal line expand out that tree, they're still going to be inside that overall umbrella. But now they quit being the royal line and they're now a descended line. And these are vastly different things. And that all gets broken down inside that. And a lot of people look at like these wars in the Middle East and things and don't understand that a lot of times that's the what these fights are is uh, different family lines breaking off and then claiming they're the royal line or they're the better line. And then even further, you have lines that are like, you know what, we don't even care about that. We just we're just we're the we're the uh, 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 special ones. Where that, like in Christianity, that is called the uh, Melchizedek, the order of Melchizedek. Mm -hmm. So where there doesn't have to be a blood tie, you are chosen because of some spirituality you've exhibited or, or some other possible thing. Uh, so, but then that doesn't require the blood tie. And the same thing we see that in the Muslims with like the Shiite or the Sunni, uh, depending on whether the one set is are you a descendant of muhammad and the other set says you don't have to be a uh, uh descendant of muhammad blah 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 a lot of religious crap going on there uh all over but these things are very very important uh in almost every culture so with that um, yeah go ahead and throw out what you got here going on here rachel the next one yeah go ahead and uh, um, read your yeah. parts i talk too damn much Oh, you're fine. No, that was really good. It's really important stuff. <laughs> you know, every every culture has their bloodlines, and I think everyone wants to be able to trace it back to that beginning of the fractal. Right. I think that's where we're at and, now. Is that you know we're on a fractal existence in a fractal plane, and we are yeah. really all one family. Um, being able to trace it back to the start is awesome, but it doesn't negate the fact that we are all actually we're still all part of those families, like. Just, that's just the truth. <laughs> exactly. So let's see. Then it goes into, then that's where it breaks in um, Odin and Vili and Vey, but it uses the different names, Hynir and Loder, which yep, now, is interesting. And it does in this version also when it jumps to 18. Um, mm hmm those are the three that are mentioned in the making of Ask and Embla. Now, when you look it up, most people tie Lothar to uh, Loki. And that's just a different uh, spelling of Loki is what you find in most things. In fact, hold on. Um, do they have a cliff note or a little? Okay, so for 15, it says for Hornir and Lothar, 
His name and function has not yet been fully explained satisfactorily, nor has that of Lothar. Both possibly are hypostases of Odin, which even if you went with uh, 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 Odin, Vili, and Ve, that is my opinion, that that's a, uh, this is before Odin went through the Odin test. And uh, he had three minds that were distinctly separate and he hadn't merged them into one mind yet. And the three minds just were distinctly separate things. Um, so that's where I stand with it also. Uh, so, but then Hornir is apparently mentioned it, or is a mentioned in a few other places. And like I said, there's spots in different cultures where then Lothar um, is in there. Uh, but mine doesn't pick them up until it starts distinctly talking. Are you, are you talking about Ask and Embla right here? Mm -hmm. Are they bringing up Ask and Embla already? Okay, so yeah. then also mine... Uh, to the coast they came, the mighty, from the gathered gods, the three of seer, land they found and gathered. So then Ask and Embla they make from, uh, so now they're talking about how they fashioned the first humans. Um, this is a phrase I thought was interesting in mine. It says, since, since they possessed not, soul they had not. So they ain't got no brains and they don't have a soul. Um, nor bit being nor bearing this was interesting nor blooming hue mm -hmm. that's a fascinating phrase because you know we're humans and and a lot of people really get bent out of shape about the hue part so, mm -hmm. so that that is you know what i'm saying a lot of yeah. people because then we're not one person because hue means color um yeah. so that is absolutely fascinating that that's something that then blooming hue is something that was then passed on to these people. Yeah. Making you like a hue that. man. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Fast. Yeah, that you have color to you. You have yeah. That's actually a really mm -hmm. beautiful description. Life. It it really mm -hmm. is. Um now with this, it's very interesting. So this is uh one of the parts I really like looking at from a cult. Soul gave Odin. Now, whenever you're looking at any of these stories, uh, there's always a psychopomp. And like whether it's Hermes Trismegistus or whoever. Now, whenever they're talking about the psychopomp, the psychopomp is always the champion of the soul. So Odin gave the soul. And so that's absolutely fascinating. Now, when you're looking at a battery, the Odin then is representing the mercurial figure, the mercury. And when you're looking at a battery, when the anode breaks apart, the electron jumps straight over to the cathode. The electron makes a beeline. That's the masculine side. It takes a direct, a direct route. The feminine side is what falls into that uh, uh, mercurial fluid. And then the mercurial fluid, it carries it through over to the cathode. So that's what we're talking about here with the champion of the soul is that uh, positive uh, ion rather than the electron side. Um, so it's absolutely fascinating. Um, so sense gave Hornier and being Lothar. Now, sense I would look at as, as more of a wisdom. So when you're looking again with that positive thought, with the feminine side, it's your... Uh, uh, engineer mind, your higher thought. Uh, masculine is dense, is restricted, is stable. Feminine is, you know, radiating and wild and chaotic. That's where you get your change from, your new ideas. The masculine's about implementing them old ideas. So that's when they talk about common sense, that's usually somebody that knows how shit works. You just already know how things work. That's a wisdom. Um, as opposed to a higher thought, uh, you know, that's common sense isn't something you uh, usually would ascribe to an engineer. Engineers are usually head in the clouds. They have no idea how the world works, but they invent the coolest fucking things. Um, so sense gave Hornier. So you're looking at more of a, a, a salt mind and then being gave Lothar 
and blooming hue. Now, I believe this would be in opposition to they, typically, the way most people understand the story. So being or ego, that thing that is being projected out to the world, you know, my blooming hue, that thing that the world sees. And even that, as a, as a color, the world definitely sees my color. And that necessarily isn't me, the, the, the uh, purity of me, the salt and oil don't hold this hue. You'll never see this. This is all egoic. And so with this Lothar, this is the ego and the part that is going to end up getting sacrificed as Odin tries to gain more wisdom and more knowledge to try and fight this prophecy that he's being delivered right now. Um, and do you have anything to add to that? Because I think we're going to have to, it looks like we're probably going to have to uh, about to the end of the first hour here. <laughs> Um, yeah, there's just a few different words, which gives a different impression. I mean, Odin gave breath, which makes sense, more like like spirit imparting that, the etheric yep, side. Yep. Um, yep. We're giving zeal. Zeal is different than... That's very different, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. Very different. Yeah. Like passion. Which, see, I can see zeal as animal power. Yeah, like, uh, you know, yeah. like a teenager, yeah. you know. Uh, our zealotry, uh, zealotry is going to be a very emotional, dense thing. It doesn't definitely doesn't re have higher thought. You know, a zealot uh -huh. doesn't think high. Like it, it, that's a, a very, uh, <laughs> yeah, very religious, very. Uh, uh, so yeah, that's very interesting wording. Yeah, and the last one's kind of the same. Though so they warmed them and brightened their complexions. And brightened, right. which, which again, when you look at a dead person, yeah, their complexion isn't like you would call Rachel or I a white person, but that's entirely different than a dead person who has that pallid, pale, like this isn't, this is full of life and, and you can see the life in it. Um, it's, it's fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. That's about the only difference there, but yeah, I like the way you're supports it a lot better. It just sounds more beautiful. <laughs> it, it, it does in some it's cases, cute. doesn't it? And yeah, it well, and then also, like I said, it just brings to mind the idea of human, um, which again, so many people get so bent out of that hue part. I've heard, I've even heard a lot of uh, conspiracy theorists say, "Don't say a human," because then that's just isolating you and breaking down into groups and blah blah blah, and I'm we're all one. Triggered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, very that 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 they get very triggered um say plan at one time on a show Woo. <laughs> yeah they get butthurt about that I'm one tempted. like like you know what i've been calling it a planet you know you know all of us none of us made it through high school thinking the earth was flat we didn't come to that until the last you know whoever 10 years at the most probably that people are coming to this information. But, you know, so at my age, that leaves me 36 years. Even if I started 10 years ago, that leaves me 36 years of calling them planets. That's just the, what happens? Like, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, now in your version, when with uh, Nordri, Sudri, um, with the directions, were those, those were part of a clan, uh, a specific clan? I feel like they were. I feel like they were. Um, let's see. Yeah, because it talks about Yggdrasil over the well and the fates. Yeah, I got that. I get that part. It's it's interesting the, the way they kind of. Yeah, some of it got a little yeah. bit swapped. Um, then they talk about Golveg. Yeah, okay, we can pick up there. But we are going to pick up there in the second hour. So with that, uh, it's about the close for the YouTube folks and Odyssey and uh, Alt Media. Um, but he's got us on all the podcast ones now and on a number of uh, the first hour on a, no a number of them. But if you want to catch the second hour, you're only going to catch that on Rockfin. And uh, Rockfin is absolutely free to view. 
if you want to come over and watch that second hour, all you got to do is click on, click on the Rockfin link. It's 100% free. If you want to leave any comments, chats, uh, tell us uh, whether we're pronouncing things horribly wrong and we should have our tongues removed from our heads. Um, if you want to do any of that, you just got to sign up and have an account that uh, will let you comment. If you want to uh, pay the $9.99 a month to uh, uh, become a premium member and access everybody's premium content on Rockfin, including guys like Sam Tripoli and uh, uh, Whitney Webb. Uh, she does some fantastic work, um, all kinds of people over there. Uh, my friend Owen Benjamins uh, just started doing live streaming over there today. So I just saw that. Uh, real excited about that. I always seem to have a hard time. I do have an account with his uh, other thing, but I have a hard time with it. So now he's over on Rockfin streaming. Just uh, happy, <laughs> happy about that. But uh, if you do that under me, I absolutely appreciate it, even though we don't uh, – click on the premium and make anything premium because we just want everybody to get the information but you definitely got to come over to rockfin to hear it so with that we love all you guys on youtube see you later